All right, today we're going to talk about gyro noise and how to tell if you have a bad gyro in your quadcopter. And then we're going to make an attempt to fix it. On this quad, uh, it's a brand new build. I have my Speedy B V2 flight controller. And it, uh, when I first put it on there, I noticed it had a gyro problem. What's interesting about this, though, is when I put this on my test rig to do some additional testing between the BMI 270 and the MPU 6000, that noise is gone. So it looks like it's an electrical issue, but it's not really related to the gyro. And also when I put the Speedy B V3 on this exact same quad, which they're very similar flight controllers, it works fine. So it has to do something with the flight controller design and the capacitance, things of that nature. So let's get into it. The first thing we're going to talk about is how do you tell when you have an issue to begin with? So line of sight, it is subtle, but you can detect it. So after applying like a preset, any of the presets, the best way to detect it is just doing, going up and doing like a slow uh, flip or roll. So you can just kind of do a slow flip or roll and you're listening for a little jerky sounds and it is kind of hard to detect I gotta be honest but you can hear it slightly in there you can hear like little jerky sounds like it's although the quad is moving smooth you're not seeing kind of hearing uh, some jerk because kind of jerk sounds in it. So the other thing I would do is some uh, flips and rolls So of course the absolute easiest way to see if you have an issue is log it and to do that We're gonna go into beta flight. We're gonna go into our black box tab here and then we're gonna set up our flash. So we can see here we have some onboard 16 meg of flash, and we're going to set that to be onboard flash. We're gonna set this to two kilohertz as the logging rate, and then we're gonna change this down to gyro scaled. So gyro, and then you can just see it's gyro scaled right there. After we have that set up, we're gonna go hit, hit save and reboot. As long as you have flash available, right here you can see it's clear. So if you see this bar is filled all the way up, you'll do the extra step of hitting this erase flash. But as long as this is clear and you didn't mess with any of anything else, when you arm, Betaflight will automatically log until this flash chip fills up and then it will stop logging. So then you can just come back in here and clear the flash if you wanna do some more logs. Now when you're done with your flight, you come back in here and you will see that their flash is filled up some, probably not all the way, but somewhat, um, mostly over halfway. And then you can just come down here and hit activate mass storage. Now that might take a second, but ultimately you open up the flight controller as a USB device. You can see here it's my F drive. You click on that and you'll see these log files here. I'll drop a link down below. You can get the Betaflight Black Box Explorer, download that, install it, and then you can just click on those files. So you can see right here, I have a number of files that I've logged with this craft. The first is when I had it on a different frame and it didn't have the noise. So it really showed that their flight controller inherently didn't have a problem. It was really just when it was paired with a 4-in-1 ESC. On this craft, this Martian, it had individual ESCs. And then I have some other logs here. This is one with no modifications made to the, to the flight controller. Here I did put a low ESR capacitor on the 3.3 rail. And then finally I did a log with powering the flight controller separately with a separate battery. So I'm not powering it from the main battery. I actually have the flight controller disconnected uh, for power supply from the ESC. So it really received a perfectly clean electrical signal. So let's go down through these one by one and I'll show you what to look for. So when the log file first opens up, it may look something like this and you see a lot of information and lines. You don't know what they are. Don't worry, we're gonna take a look and show you what they mean and what you're looking at. The first thing we wanna do is go ahead and get all on the same page with downloading my UAV Tech trace templates. So I will drop this link below, but you can go into this website and you can see the link there on the top and then browse down here. And right here, you're gonna see this Betaflight, Black Box Explorer, blah, 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 blah. 
what you're gonna do on this one, this 3.5, is you're gonna right click as it says right up above there, and you're gonna go ahead and hit and hit save link as. Of course, you can save this anywhere you want. I'm just gonna save it right there to pictures. And then in Black Box Explorer with the log open, you're gonna go hit hit file open, uh, which is kind of confusing, but that's how it works. And then you're gonna go browse to where you have that. So I saved that under pictures. And you're gonna click on that and hit open, and that will say load workspace so that's did it did what it needed to do and then after that's done on the keyboard row the row of keys that are numbers on your keyboard not the keypad not the number keypad but the row of numbers above the letters you're going to go ahead and hit four the other thing you can do is just hit this drop down up here and you can see one two three four five all the way up to you know nine and then go back to zero uh, so you could just pick it from here instead of hitting the, the numbers on the keyboard so we're going to get on to the noise plot one right here and then you'll see exactly what I see. The other thing you want to do is make sure that uh, Expo is turned on so it kind of exaggerates the lines to make it a little bit more clear and easy to see. So generally what you're gonna be looking for is if you see one axis has a lot more D-term vibration, you can hit this, this drop down here and you can see this, we're looking at the D-term and you can see which ones if I hover over there highlights. But you can see how the D-term for pitch, those lines, there's a lot more vibrations in those, a lot more ups and downs than on roll. Those should be more equivalent. If you see one axis kind of out of whack, that's a sign. It's typically the pitch axis, but doesn't always need to be. Now, the dead giveaway that you know it's an electrical issue is going to where you did a sharp flip or roll. Now, if it's your roll axis, this top bunch here, so you can see if I go up here, this is all my roll axis stuff. And then you can see here, these lines here are the pitch axis stuff and then the yaw. So what you're gonna do is go to the opposite one. So if you're suspecting that's the pitch axis is the problematic one, go up to look at your roll axis to see where you did a roll. If you're suspecting your roll axis is problematic, um, based on what we just talked about with the D-term thing, then go to where you did a flip on the pitch axis. Now, on this trace template setup, number zero, it's not as evident, but so we're gonna go ahead and click here and then go to number four. And the number four trace template setup shows us the motor commands right here. And this is basically when I'm entering and exiting a move, the roll move. So you can see the motor spin up right here for entering the move and then exiting the move where the motors go to you know, arrest the, the roll, they slow down. And you can see that my pitch axis right here, the D term kind of goes crazy. And if we go back again to the zero trace template setup, you can see that right here where these lines on the pitch axis or the D term are getting a lot of vibrations there that uh, really shouldn't be there. It's really showing that when the motors are spinning up and producing a lot of electrical noise, it's affecting the pitch axis. And this is at zero throttle. So that's, that's the key here, that you're not at a high percent throttle. You're at zero throttle when this is occurring, but you still have all this noise on this axis. So that is a telltale sign that you have an electrical noise issue on your quad uh, for one of the axes, uh, whichever one is showing it. And another way to confirm that is just go then to the opposite. So now here you can see we're seeing a pitch move where we're sticking, you know, having a, a forward stick pitch. And you can kind of use these sticks to kind of get your bearings. You can see I'm dropping throttle here and doing full stick uh, pitch forward. And you can see that move. But notice the roll axis doesn't have a lot of noise to it. Whereas if I do the opposite and do a roll, then the pitch axis spikes in noise. Again, showing you the one axis as being more susceptible to uh, electrical noise. Now on this flight controller, what made me suspect of the electrical noise issue is what I just talked about before, but it can confirm that I don't have the issue when I had the flight controller on a quad that had individual ESCs. So on this one, this is a Martian 2 frame, has individual ESCs, and it does not have the issue. This is what things should look like. So you can see I'm in a roll move here. The pitch axis isn't going crazy at all. Um, but this is what I'm getting when I'm pairing it with a 4-in-1 ESC. Now this, I'm rolling the opposite direction. As you can hear, I'm rolling to the right. Here, I'm rolling to the left. But nevertheless, you can see how the pitch axis is kind of overreacting with that electrical noise. So here's what it looks like with a 25 volt, 330 microfarad, low ESR electrolytic capacitor on the 3.3 volt rail. Now why that uh, rail? So it's basically the 3.3 volt pad and ground that you're wiring up to this little capacitor. 
And why does it matter for that? It's the 3.3 is the same power supply or rail that the um, MCU and the gyro are connected to as well. So of course we want that to be clean with electrical noise. But unfortunately, as you can see, it doesn't really look any different. It doesn't look like just an electrolytic capacitor is really gonna make any change. I've done this on other quads and other flight controllers on the five volt rail, didn't help. And of course this quad does have a 1500 microfarad a low ACR capacitor, 35 volt electrolytic as well on the battery leads uh, to the ESC. And then finally, this is the same quad, same everything with just powering the flight controller with a separate battery. So to set that up, what we did is remove the red wire that goes from the ESC up to the flight controller, but kept the grounding wire there. So we had a uh, you know common ground for everything. And then I took a separate, you can see XT60 connector and wired it right up to the flight controller. Again, black wire to ground, and then the red wire to go to the VBAT pad, any of the VBAT pads on the flight controller. And then in this case, I was feeding it with a 2S, but you could feed it with anything the flight controller supports. The key here is you keep the ground connection with the ESC, but you remove the power connection from the ESC up to the flight controller, and then you just power it with this. And uh, yeah, you can see the difference. So the next thing I wanted to try here was a tantalum capacitor. They look something like this. You can see I have it all wired up here, but unfortunately when I was part pushing the USB connector back onto the flight controller, I kind of pushed too hard and broke it off. Now when I try to power up the flight controller, everything's fine. You can see I just wired it up straight up to a connector here, but for some reason it's not getting signal to the ESC. So that sucks. But what did we learn from all this? So one of the biggest things, if you see this kind of behavior over here, it might not be your gyro. It could just be pure electrical isolation on the flight controller. That if you get a capacitor on there and it doesn't seem like in any of the tests that I've ever done that electrolytic, I would try different capacitors like a tantalum or a ceramic or something else that you can wire up to the 3.3 volt rail to see if that looks better. I'm gonna be on the hunt now for a flight controller that has these same issues uh, to see if I can see if this will work. The other thing is don't rule out powering the flight controller separately. Now, obviously for small crafts, that's ridiculous. A five inch, that's kind of ridiculous. But if you have a cine lifter, I see that a lot of folks are doing it and you probably should be too. They create a ton of electrical noise, especially these cine lifters that are using two four and one ESCs. They typically will have issues where, you know, it, at that point, it's really worth just having a separate power supply for your flight controller and maybe even for your cameras and whatnot, and then just have the main batteries uh, power the motors and the ESCs. Uh, make sure everything is a common ground just for the signals to not get whacked out. But uh, yeah, it seems like that will probably make it a lot better, a lot smoother flight footage. Because obviously having something like that where that D-term jitter is jumping up and down a lot, that's gonna make for a rough ride. And for a cine lifter or other cinematic kind of craft that's usually larger, larger motors make more electrical noise it's really up to you, but it's definitely something you want to look for to see, make sure everything is in working order. And then you have some options. The biggest is just different flight controller or powering it separately with a separate battery. Or again, hopefully I'll get back to this and get another flight controller that has an issue. And I can try out uh, this tantalum capacitor and see if that helps or works. But that will do it for now. If you enjoy this content, please do hit the like button. It helps me on the analytics. Thanks again, everybody. I hope this helps.